Okay, welcome back to Project Highlights. Uh, today we have BitVote with us, quite a big turnout. Uh, we have Leah, Aaron, Jasper, and Vlad. You guys want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name's Aaron. I'm the founder of BitVote. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. I'm a neuroscience student turned disability advocate with a special interest in neuroprosthetics and social engineering security. Hi, my name is Leah Chase. I'm a nursing school graduate currently preparing for my licensure exam. I'm also a mom. I have a rambunctious five-year-old at home. Right now I work as a home health aide and uh, in my spare time I'm publicist for the BitVote project. Hi, I'm Jasper. Um, I uh, studied physics and got into open source and then open source hardware. And uh, at some point I decided to figure out how Bitcoin worked and then I, that led me to Ethereum and then BitVote. And Vlad? Hey, yeah, I'm Vlad. Um, I've basically been trolling Aaron about BitVote for a while, and until today, I didn't really think that we had a good way to solve one I, one person, one vote. But now I do, so I'm excited about BitVote. And I think people will recognize you also from Crypto Trots from a previous uh, interview we did together. Um, great. So, guys, can you tell me a little bit more about what BitVote is, what problem it solves, how does it work? Um, before we get into the technical definition, uh, I've asked Leah here to give you a simple walkthrough uh, because we really don't want to alienate the voters. It's not just for the tech savvy. Mm -hmm. So the idea for BitVote uh, came out of the growing frustration among regular citizens that their will isn't being heard or taken into consideration by corrupt, corrupt political forces. Mm -hmm. Awareness has been increasing among like normal people all over the world that the systems in place don't uh, take the, accurately represent them. So we see people taken to the streets to protest, writing petitions, sharing information on social media, and like voting for candidates who they think will represent them better. But these tactics have been shown repeatedly to not work when you're up against resistance from larger powers such as corporate lobbies and so forth. Mm -hmm. So this is where BitVote comes in. BitVote allows you to share what really matters to you in the world. I'm going to go ahead and do um, a run through of our demo right. so you can see exactly how BitVote works. Right, let's have a look. So I go to the BitVote website and sign in and on my home screen there are four clocks. So I'm going to start here. Here are my four clocks. We have the current time, the time I registered, spent vote time, and you can see I have no spent vote time thus far. And then here's my available vote time, which uh, begins ticking when you first register and then uh, increases indefinitely with the actual minutes and seconds and hours that you are living life on Earth. You can't earn buy or trade vote time. The clock just starts ticking when you register. Okay, I'm going to show you how voting works. You can see I've just registered, so I don't have any spent vote time. So I'll go down to this URL box here, and I can type in any HTTP link that represents something important to me. So one thing that has been a concerning issue for me personally is this chemical company, Monsanto, and its monopoly over the food industry. I've attended protests, signed petitions, along with thousands of other people. And um, despite that, the Monsanto, Monsanto Protection Act was recently signed into law, thus the will of the people has been ignored by those in power. This is just an example. Voters may or may not agree, but they can communicate their stance on issues by using BitVote and adding their votes to the vote chain, which I'll explain in a moment. So I'll enter this link that I chose, which I think represents what I care about, http colon slash slash www.organicconsumers dot org slash Monsanto. <clears throat> now, this is an important issue to me, but I want to see what other links voters may be adding to the vote chain that have to do with Monsanto. Maybe they have um, links that better represent how I feel. So for now, I'm just going to use, since I only have three minutes, I'm just going to use one minute. So that's about 29% of what how many uh, vote minutes I have, but I'll show you first uh, if I try to overvote, it tells me I don't have that much, it stops me. So then here you can manually edit, it's in seconds, um, how many minutes you want to add, or seconds.
and then you hit vote. So my votes are underway. I gave up one minute. And then if I scroll down, <clears throat> this is the vote chain. This is visible to everyone. It's a decentralized um, just legend of all the votes on BitVote. And you can see there at the bottom, one minute, organicconsumers.org slash Monsanto. And then uh, if I just like browse a little bit, Mayo Clinic, oh, marchagainstmonsanto.com. So there's another link. Maybe I'll explore that. And, you know, there's five votes there already. So maybe that's a better link and maybe offers better um, ways to fix the problem. Um, another thing that I'd like to point out about the vote chain is, um, and BitVote itself, is that it's completely compatible with um, current, you know, business, government, um, and social media models. Um, you know, I'm using a MacBook now, but um, we want to, in the future, make apps for Androids, iPhones, um, you know, widgets, so that you can it can be compatible with anything. And then the other thing, the other p point I want to make is, um, you know, governments and separate third-party entities can take this vote chain and analyze it. That's not third-party entities can look at this vote chain and analyze it and uh, make of it what they will. Marketing companies can see what the people care about. Small business owners can look at it and see what their consumers are concerned about and maybe choose not to sell certain products or what have you. Um, and then governments or maybe potentially um, non-corrupt or uh, legitimate political entities can see what the will of the people actually is and then take steps with their power that they have to make the will of the people heard and heeded. BitVote itself um, doesn't have any uh, political power per se, but it provides a tool for political power to be handed back to the people and at least for their will to be easily visible on this blockchain with anonymous votes. Uh, all right, so that's the entire concept right there. It's, uh, it's very easy from the perspective of the voters. Uh -huh. um, now I'll provide the technical definition and then I'll let Jasper and Vlad um, explain the rest of that. BitVote is a self-developing digital ecosystem built on top of the BitVote chain protocol that empowers the people to interpret and express themselves in a measurable and comparable way by providing actual minutes of their real life on Earth. They can be linked to any idea they want. It's also impossible to dismiss. BitVote will protect Ethereum, as well as the entire internet, from social and political attacks by empowering people with revolutionary yet deceptively simple me mechanisms to build support until it gains legal standing. Very well. Jasper? The front end will be the familiar HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, mm -hmm. where JavaScript has bindings to the Ethereum contract, so it can look at uh, the status of votes and how much voting power you have and how much uh, votes, uh, what votes are out there. And the, 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 the backside will be the Ethereum contracts itself, which do the, uh, the bits where they, they keep track of how much voting power people voting time people have and how much uh, how much different topics have have accumulated what their score is basically and the one thing that might uh, change that is uh, that it might be a little bit more complicated if we need sc scalability and need to do use some trick to try make sure all the voters, there's enough room for the voters in in the system, basically. Scalability. Scalability, yes. And the one difficult problem with it is the one that one person has one vote, or at least people cannot exploit the voting multiple times to really affect the system. So the key technical problem with voting systems is that you need to have a one vote for every person 
or one person for every vote. Mm -hmm. It needs to be a one-to-one -one correlation between votes and people. You can't have the same person with two votes. So the main so you need a good identity system. The main way I was thinking about doing identity systems for the last like few months and was by through reputation, building identity through reputation. Now um I realized today that you can do voting without identity through reputation by having everyone vote at the exact same time. If everyone spends a little bit of time at the exact same time voting and they can ver verifiably prove that they did that somehow, then you will have one person, one vote. Right, right. So to prevent so civil every attacks. Vote, exactly. So, so every time there would be a vote, everyone, would, everyone who wants to vote on that issue would basically show up and then play a little game for a couple of minutes and then submit their vote and that would be it. Brilliant. And it's pretty simple, but the hard part is figuring out what is this different game that we give people every time. Yeah. Okay, so Aaron, what sort of um, pr progress can people expect on the project going forward in the next few months? Uh, I'm very conscious that Ethereum uh, will be live in only probably six months or so. Uh, are you guys developing the application while Ethereum is being developed? Um, yes, uh, we are. Um, and we absolutely encourage all um, coders who like the project to jump in and help the development team. Um, any uh, develop, um, donators or business types that want to start working on the uh, social aspects of it. Um, but really what we want to do most is before we go forward, we want to bring the voters in. We want to bring the people in and see what, um, what it's going to take for them to trust the system because um, you know, we have our uh, guesses and our opinions, but really it's it's going to be about them. So that's who we want to come in next. Um, we want to start getting feedback. Uh, we want to start seeing which direction they take us, and then we can give more of a, um, a better guess on a follow-up interview. Great. Thank you. And where can people learn more about your project? Is there a website or a blog? Uh, yeah, right now we have a wiki um, that is linked directly on the top right corner of bitvote.github.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, any thought that uh, you want to leave us with? The, really, the thing that I want people to uh, remember is how they felt when they first found out about the Internet and how much hope it used to have and how inspiring uh, the whole Internet used to be when we were you know, growing up and how sharply that contrasts with a lot of the concerns people have today. If you think of where the internet's going to be in five or ten years, there's a lot of things to worry about with neutrality and surveillance and censorship and you know, I, I, I just worry that I worry that the future generations aren't going to have that same type of feeling we have. Instead of inspiring them, it's going to be something that scares them or terrifies them mm -hmm. and I hope that this project will be able to tip the scales back and maybe give us a chance to, to start systematically fixing whatever it is that's causing that change. So, I don't know. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Brilliant, guys. Well, thank you for so much for your time today. Uh, all the links are in the description of this video, and I'm sure we'll talk to you soon for a project update. Thank you again. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Cheers. Bye-bye.